Well, hello there, and welcome back. In this video, we're going to go over some more advanced things that we can do with these hooks. Now, I'm not going to cover every single possible scenario. I'm not even going to cover all of the different types of hooks, because if I, if I did that, you know, we would be here until next Christmas. But I have a feeling that these hooks are going to be really, really important. So I've kind of pinpointed two or three things that I think would be really worth knowing, okay? So, if you're all ready to rock, then let us begin. Now what I'd like to do to start off is take a closer look at this vibe here. And as you can see, we have three arguments being passed in. We have context, unused, and next. I'll start with next and I'll move left and I'll explain what each and every one of these things does. Now, the next thing is a standard with no JS. This is a special method that when fired, sends a message to Node.js that says, hey Node, would you please move on to the next thing? And that's what it does. Now, this one here, unused, this is actually quite literally unused. It does nothing. And I know that you're thinking, no, that can't be true. Well, welcome to the bleeding edge of IT. Folks, we are dealing with technologies so new and so incredible that sometimes there are little eccentric things left behind. And this is actually um, a leftover from some legacy stuff. And the vibe is we need this here just as a placeholder. We could have any word you want here, you know, even the word banana or anything. Even shabala, you could have that. And if we did not have that, we'd have an error message. So this serves no purpose other than to prevent us from getting errors. It's just a kind of placeholder, okay? Moving along, we have a thing called Context. Now, sometimes you'll see this in documentation and whatnot, and they'll write it as something like CTX or something like that. This is a special object that gets added onto the remote hooks. And in the case of the before remote hook, the context object has a very special thing called args attached to it. Let me show you how this works, okay? If I go in here and say var args equals, and then I'll say context dot args, but I'm going to make it a little bit easier on the old eyeball, so I'll say json dot stringify context dot args, and now I'm going to say the say my name function or method method is about to receive and then I'll chuck in the arguments like so. So I'm just going to save that. Now I'm going to run that and as soon as this has started up I'll open up the explorer here Anyway, members, say my name, you know how this works, right? And I'll just say David, and I'm going to say try it out, but keep an eye on that terminal on the right-hand side. Here we go. And as you can see, it says this, uh, the say my name function method is about to receive. And you'll see we have an object with my name and David. And interestingly, this has actually helped to identify a little mistake because we were dealing with first name, do you remember? So if we open up member.json, you can see that we did change this, but we actually forgot to change this here. It's not a biggie, it's not going to break anything, but these are the little details that kind of makes you sleep more comfortably at night. So I'm just restarting the thing here. And I'm going to say, try it out. Oh, Jiminy, what we got here? Hmm, 
Let me just refresh this, shall we? Let me just refresh this. Okay, I'm going to bet you a virtual $10 that this works. Okay, let's just see. And we'll just do that. Try it out. Okay, and that worked. So you can see it's a wee bit messy, but can you see that there? Okay, so thank you very much. So, this context object is very important as far as hooks go, because this is going to give us access to the arguments that are about to go into the function, the say my name function. I should say say my name method, but you know what I'm saying here, right? Now, um, suppose we want to just isolate the first name, right? So we don't want to get entangled with json.stringifies and all of that stuff. Uh, we would like to just get straight to the good stuff. And let's imagine that we just want to go straight into this context thing and grab the first name. Okay, so we could do that by saying var first name equals context.args dot first name and then we could go here and we could say your first name is and we chuck in the first name like so okay there we go and I'm just gonna uh, clear this here and restart and if we click try it out you'll see that it says your first name is, okay? And you can chuck anything you want, obviously, in here. And that will be just fine. Now, one of the uses for that is that we can use this to uh, perform some kind of validation. Or, as a matter of fact, you could use it for all sorts of things. You could even use this maybe, you know, if you had an IP blacklist or something like that going on. There are a million different uses that I could think of for this. And I think that this ability to access the arguments before they go into the main function here, this has surely got to be a very handy feature. So let's now have a closer look at the after remote hook. And as you can see, once again, we have three arguments that are passed into this. Again, we have next, you know what that is. We have context over here on the left, you know what that is as well. And in the middle this time, we have a thing, I've uh, given it the name final output. Now, if you look at the documentation, they give it the name remote method output, which is fine. And this contains pretty much as the thing suggests, the stuff that is about to be output sent to the end user. Now, it turns out, I for, forgive me if this all sounds a bit complicated, but it turns out that the context object, which is on after remote hooks, okay, the context object contains a thing called result. And we can say something like context dot result dot first name equals Sally. And we can change that first name property that goes out to the end user. However, we can also say final output dot uh, first name equals and then we can say something like uh, I don't know anything you want Lewis and that will do exactly precisely the same thing now I've just spent two and a half hours trying to figure out the difference between this context dot result and this thing in the middle here that I'm calling final output, they call it remote method output. Well, I failed. 
And I think it's one of those areas where the documentation is just weak, you know? It's just weak. So it turns out that actually, probably for the purposes of just simplicity, it's probably a good idea just to say unused here as well. That's my recommendation. And let's just forget about this middle one here, okay? So I'm going to just say context.result.firstname equals Sally. I'm going to save this and then I'm going to restart the server like so. Okay, so the server has restarted and I'm saying here first name equals Harry and I'm clicking try it out and as you can see the response body has changed and now the first name is Sally. And as a matter of fact, we can even add on properties, things like this, context.result.lastname equals, and we can say something like Smith. I'm just going to save that and then restart the server. And then I'm going to click try it out. And this time, you can see that we now have a brand new property that has been added and this time it's last name. And in fact, we can easily delete properties as well. It's all pretty straightforward. So the point is that with these hooks here, we can have complete control of everything that's going in, everything that's going out and the implications of this are mind-blowing. Now, just so you know, we have been looking at remote hooks. There are other types of hooks. There's operation hooks and connector hooks. But I'm not going to cover that stuff. And the reason why, well, there's two reasons. First of all, I don't think you need me. If you've followed me this far, you'll be able to figure that out. But the other reason is because, to be honest, I'm not even sure if we'll need the other stuff, you know? So... I think I'll leave it there for hooks and thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you in the next video where we'll be looking at video streaming. Stay cool. See you soon.